doing a, the float height on this YZ250F. Check this out. I mean, this is how far off this is. This is actually supposed to just be at 8 millimeters. It's actually supposed to be right here. So you kind of see how that's... Let's pause for a second, because as you watch the rest of this video, I want you to thoroughly understand the theory here. Right here in this photo, you can see that those two parallel lines represent what the float height measurement should be, but that only works if you have the carburetor set in the right orientation. Now look at this as how it actually was as I took it apart. I mean, holy smokes, it's way off, it's not parallel, it's extreme. Watch the rest of the video for specific information on this. Parallel with the carb body. This is how it is. Down inside here, right down in there, that little needle tip right there, to set these floats correctly, that is just supposed to touch it, but not depress it. So the seat, the float needs to be, this is the float, this is the float valve, some call the needle valve. That needs to be closed, but that little tip, that's for vibration. That's what helps the float uh, needle not get beat to death through vibration, right? But to shut the fuel off, you want that just touching. So you can't see it, I'll do that again, how that springs. Now watch what happens when I don't put the carburetor in the right position. Okay, if I just take and try and set this on the bench, what do you think that last person set that float height at? See what I'm saying? They just set it wrong. It's You can't have the whole weight of the float on there or you're going to be severely off. And it in this case, well, in any of these cases, it's if you do this, if you hold it like this on the bench, it's going to be severely lean. If you take and do this, okay, so you're getting it to where it just bounces, it just touches that, but doesn't depress it. So can you see that? Let's see if I can get some light on there. There we go. You go here, it's collapsing. Right about there, it's just touching, but it's not collapsing it. So that's how we need to go ahead and set that. Before I adjust it, I took a, a quick still picture here, and you can see the angle of that tab is just s severely bent down compared to how we typically see them. Uh, when you have the right float assembly, the right parts, and it's adjusted correctly, it usually isn't this dramatic. That's really an indication because it's it's severely angled down. If you ever looked at one of these stock or brand new out of the package, that little metal tab right there would actually be just um, straight, and then you adjust it to so. But to have such an excessive bend on it is a real good clue something's wrong too. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. You can see where I adjusted it now and where it lands every time. Another good indicator that you're in the right ballpark, it's pretty common for the float and the body to be parallel with each other. So and you, always, you always want to check yourself quite a few times because you can have it where something sticks. What I'm going to show you here is I would take my veneer caliper set to my spec and take it like this and put it across the body and the top of the float. I would do that to both sides and make sure that both sides went in the right position because sometimes what can happen is you can twist that float around. So I want to make sure both of them, like I said, in the right position are going to land at that 8 millimeter. That is how you'd properly set that float height. And that's also some clues uh, that I said if that tab is severely bent, um, that's another indicator that someone's probably been in there. So keep wrenching. There's another tip for you. Before I sign off on this video, I want to throw a challenge out there to have you uh, comment below why you think there's a strong possibility that on this particular example that float height was set so incredibly lean. Let's see what you come up with. I've got a pretty good theory. If you like what you see here, would you please share it? I'd love you to keep my platform going here on uh, technical education and uh, um, the ways to be great in your craftsmanship. So keep on wrenching and we'll see you again in the future. Thanks for being a subscriber and follower of the channel.